In this video, we're going to see how molecular orbital theory can help us understand and predict how certain types of chemical and physical interventions cause changes in bond order within molecules and can cause chemistry to happen. Specifically, we're going to focus on electron transfer, adding or removing electrons to or from an atom, and the impact of light what absorbing a photon can do to change the molecular orbital situation in a molecule. And let's start by talking about oxidation and reduction, the removal or addition of an electron respectively to a molecule. Removing or adding electrons can affect bond order, since if we add or remove electrons to the molecular orbitals, uh, to or from the molecular orbitals, we're going to change the numbers of bonding and antibonding electrons and change that bond order calculation. And some general principles are laid out on this slide for how to think about this. So let's entertain the idea of a very simple molecular orbital situation just with sigma and sigma star orbitals. And let's imagine, you know, we started like this, which is a bit of a nonsensical occupancy situation, but it's going to help us make our point. Bond order increases when we increase the number of bonding electrons. Bonding electrons are added or when antibonding electrons are removed. So for example, in this situation, bond order would increase if we added an electron into the sigma bonding orbital, but bonding, bond order would also increase if we removed an electron from the antibonding orbital, since this decreases the antibonding character, if you like, within the molecule, removing that antibonding electron. Bond order goes down, on the other hand, if we add anti-bonding electrons or remove bonding electrons. So for instance here, if we add in an electron to the sigma star orbital, this will decrease the bond order by increasing the amount of anti-bonding character, if you like, within the molecule. Removing a bonding electron is going to have the same effect. This will lower the bonding character in the molecule and decrease the bond order overall. And these effects are predictable based on how the molecular orbital occupancies change as we add or remove an electrons, usually in accordance with the Aufbau principle. We add electrons in to the lowest energy orbital possible and remove electrons from the highest energy orbital possible, that kind of thing. Now, excitation of a molecule by light, absorption of a photon, can also change the occupancies of molecular orbitals and cause a change in bond order and often cause chemistry to take place through the cleavage of bonds. So let's again imagine a simple sigma, sigma star molecular orbital situation in the ground state with two electrons in the sigma bonding orbital. If this molecule absorbs a photon whose energy is equivalent to the gap between the sigma and sigma star orbitals, what will happen is promotion of one of the electrons in the sigma orbital into the higher energy sigma star orbital, leading to an occupancy picture that looks like this now. If we just think about bond order here on a very basic level, here we've got a bond order of one, two bonding electrons, no anti-bonding. The typical situation, bond order is equal to one. What about the situation after this absorption of a photon, after the promotion of an electron from the sigma to the sigma star orbital? Well, now we have one bonding electron and one anti-bonding electron, no net bonding, a bond order of zero. So this photo-excited molecule with this kind of funky looking excited state molecular orbital occupancy is actually going to tend to fall apart, right? Because its bond has been seriously weakened by the absorption of this photon. So for example, th this could be used to split an H2 molecule into individual hydrogen atoms. The hydrogen molecule absorbs a photon, an electron gets promoted to the sigma star orbital, and all of a sudden, because of the zero bond order created this way, that H2 molecule is induced to fall apart into two hydrogen atoms. In this example problem, we're asked to predict which molecule contains a stronger bond, neutral O2 or the dication O2, 2 plus. We're also asked which molecule contains a longer bond, which is related to our conceptual understanding of what stronger means in terms of bond length. Let's start with the molecular orbital energy diagram of O2 that we've generated previously. And I've gone ahead and highlighted the bonding and anti-bonding electrons in orange and green, respectively. And now let's ask ourselves, okay, assuming the molecular orbitals themselves don't change, which is a reasonable assumption for our purposes here, how is the molecular orbital energy diagram going to look different for O2 2 plus? 
Well, we make O2 2 plus by removing two electrons from the neutral O2 molecule. So the only difference between this diagram and the one we're about to generate here is going to be these two highest energy electrons in the pi star 2p orbital. This is an Aufbau principle idea that when we kick out the uh, electrons, we're going to kick out the two highest energy electrons to generate the ground state electron configuration for O2 2 plus. And that looks something like this. It is identical to the neutral O2 diagram, just with those two highest energy electrons missing. And that's it. Now, to think about bond strength and bond length, let's calculate the bond order in each of these two molecules. In the neutral O2 molecule, and we've done this before, we've got eight bonding electrons. We've got four antibonding electrons divided by two. The bond order in neutral O2 is two. What about O2, two plus? Well, we've lost two of the anti-bonding electrons. And if we think back to our general principle here, that when anti-bonding electrons are removed, the bond order increases, we already have a pretty good idea of what's going to happen here. O2 is actually 2 plus, O2, 2 plus, the dication is going to contain a stronger bond than O2 due to its higher bond order. And the bond order math confirms this, right? We have now only two anti-binding electrons, still have the eight bonding electrons. The net bond order now is three. The overall conclusion here is that the longer and weaker bond is in neutral O2, and the stronger and shorter bond is in O2. 2 plus. One more funny thing I would add here is that if you try to draw a Lewis structure for O2 2 plus, you will be very, very pleasantly surprised to learn that the best Lewis structure for this molecule includes a triple bond between the two oxygen atoms. This molecule is actually what we would call isoelectronic with neutral N2. The only difference between this molecule and N2 is two additional protons in the nuclei of the oxygen atoms.